in problem number 39, I'd like to find the critical points of the function f of x equals cosine squared of x on the interval 0 to pi. Then I want to find the absolute extrema of f on that interval. Uh, and just as we saw uh, in problem number 37, we have a procedure here. The first thing we want to do is we want to find all the critical points. The way I find critical points is I take the derivative of the function and I say where is that derivative equal to zero or where is that derivative undefined. Then I say, okay, which of those actually falls in the interval where I'm concerned? Once I figure that out, then I can test to see where my absolute extreme are. So let's start this problem out by finding all the critical points. So first we need to take a derivative of the function. So the derivative of f of x equals cosine squared of x is f prime of x is equal to, by the chain rule, I bring down the 2, 2 cosine of x times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. So my derivative is 2 times cosine of x times negative sine of x. Or if you prefer, I could say that f prime of x is equal to um, negative 2 times cosine of x times sine of x. And we're interested in where this thing is 0 or undefined. Now, there are no... There's nothing on the bottom of this uh, function. There's no denominator. So this thing's never going to be e uh, undefined in any way. Uh, cosine is a nice continuous function. Sine's a nice continuous function. Uh, this is going to exist for any value of x. So we're just concerned with where is this thing going to be equal to 0. So if we set this thing equal to 0, could say that 0 is equal to negative 2 times cosine of x times sine of x. <clears throat> and now we're just interested in, okay, negative 2 is never equal to 0. Cosine of x could be 0, or sine of x could be 0. Uh, wherever any of those are 0, I would get a critical point. And there are lots of places where cosine of x is 0 and sine of x is 0. In fact, there are infinitely many places where cosine of x is 0 and sine of x are 0. But I'm not interested in all of them. I'm just interested in the ones that actually live in between 0 and pi. So I'm looking for a value of x so that cosine of x is 0, but also x lives between 0 and pi. Well, for cosine... Uh, there's only one of them, and that is that x would have to be equal to pi over 2. Because cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and that's the only value of cosine that, uh, the only x value that would give me 0 for cosine, that's in between 0 and pi. What about for sine? Well, for sine, sine of 0 is 0, and sine of pi is 0. Both of those are in this interval, so I could add to my list here 0 and pi. So my critical points in this case are x equals pi over 2, 0, and pi. Now that I know that, I can go ahead and te test for absolute extrema. And the way that I test for absolute extrema is I test all critical points in my original function, and I test all endpoints of my interval. Well, it just so happens that two of those are the same thing. Zero is an endpoint. Pi is an endpoint. So I just have three things I need to test. I need to find out what is f of zero, because zero is an endpoint and a critical value. Uh, I need f of pi over two, which is only a critical point. And I need f of pi. And pi is both a critical point and an endpoint. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate these at this point. So f of 0, I'm plugging back into the original function. I get cosine squared of 0. Cosine squared of 0. Well, cosine of 0 is 1. And 1 squared 
is 1, so I get 1. Now I get uh, f of pi over 2. I plug in pi over 2 here, and I get cosine squared of pi over 2, which is cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and 0 squared is 0, so I get 0. And finally, I get cosine squared of pi. Well, cosine of pi is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is 1. Okay, and now I say, oh, which one of these numbers is the biggest? Well, 1 is, and it, and it occurs at two different places. So this guy is an absolute maximum. This is also an absolute maximum. And then I say, which of these numbers is the smallest? Well, 0. So 0 is an absolute minimum. So let's write down the final answer here. I could say that f uh, has an absolute maximum of uh, 1. 1 is the very biggest number I got here. At x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to pi. So I have an absolute maximum value of this function of 1, and that happens at 0 and pi. Then I can say f has an absolute minimum of, in this case, 0, the smallest number, at x is equal to pi over 2. And that would be my final answer for this problem.